Welcome to Learn at Home with VIA. My name is Amanda Capone and I'm the Career Pathways Coordinator in Southern Tioga School District. Joining me today are some dynamic students from our two high schools. We hope you learn a little more about career exploration and now I'm going to turn it over to them to get started. Hi, I'm Alex Stein from North Penn Mansfield High School. Hi, I'm Amy Feaster from North Penn Liberty. Hi, my name is Brody Burley from North Penn Mansfield. Hi, I'm Grace Tice from North Penn Mansfield. Hi, I'm Caitlin Bartlett from North Penn Mansfield. Hi, I'm Naomi Ruth from North Penn Mansfield. I'm Caitlin Noah from North Penn Mansfield High School. When we were asked to do a college and career ready segment for WVIA, we were honored. You like me. You really like me. But then we had to get serious. What should we focus on? There's so much more we could talk about regarding college and career readiness. Job shadows, resume, job search, college searches, college applications, financial aid, interviewing skills, employability, skills, and budgeting. And then we remembered we saw this guy. At this place. And he had given us a challenge. Have every ninth grade student call someone in their career field they're interested in. Wait, what? You know, help them connect with some kind of career mentor. Oh. Okay, a mentor is like a coach. No, not that type of coach. I mean, people who are experts in their field because they kept learning after high school. They got that job and they worked their way up and now they can guide you. They share knowledge so that you can make good choices toward a future career goal. Think about it. If you want to be a police officer, doesn't it make sense to ask a police officer how you do that? Yes. yes. Or if you want to work in communications. Doesn't it make sense to talk to someone in broadcasting? Yes. yes. Starting to look for career guidance now sets the stage for you to connect with future mentors. So why does this matter? Let's ask Amy. Amy? Thanks, Alex. Mentors do matter. Research shows that students who have mentors are more likely to pursue additional education and training after high school. And this relationship can give you the confidence to seek out future mentors, which means you'll have support in the workplace as well. According to Dr. Lauren Bidwell, people who experience workplace mentoring, one, make more money, two, earn more promotions, and three, are more satisfied with their career than non-mentored employees. And it's not just you who will benefit. Your mentor benefits too. Mentors report greater job satisfaction and mentoring.org reports that they recognize preparing young people for college and careers develops the future workplace talent pipeline. PAE Mentoring puts it this way, employees who give just 15 minutes a week from their desk can provide the guidance and reinforcement necessary to positively impact a student for a lifetime. It's a win-win. There is even an entire month dedicated to mentoring. And he thinks mentoring is a good idea. Developing skills now to get a career mentor will help ensure future success. Grace? Thanks, Amy. Listen, we all need to dig a little deeper into our career choice to make sure it's the right fit for us. Oh, I'm just a sophomore. I don't need to worry about that yet. Yes, you do. The sooner you start planning, the better. Now is the time to seek out those who know the most about your future career choice. Those who can guide you and help you avoid pitfalls they experienced. I mean, what if Fred Rogers didn't have Margaret McFarland? What if Pink didn't have Linda Perry? What if Kevin Hart didn't have Chris Rock? Without these mentors, you wouldn't believe that cool people could come from Pennsylvania, and these people may have never reached their full potential. See the power of connecting with someone in your future career choice? And you can't always wait for a mentor to come to you. Sometimes you have to go out and get a mentor. Did Will Smith wait for Muhammad Ali to come to him about making the movie Ali? No, he went out and got him. Well, we think he did. That could be a little exaggeration for dramatic effect. Now you need to go out and make your career connection with a career mentor. Go, now, I'll wait. Did you find a career mentor? No? 
<laughs> okay, maybe you don't know where to begin. That's understandable. You probably haven't gone out to get a mentor before. And it's not like you can go to Sheets and buy one with your MTO sandwich. I feel like there were a lot of Pennsylvania references in that last one. Naomi, can you let them know how to get a career mentor? I'd be happy to, Grace. All right, first let me give you some basic steps to finding a career mentor. Step one, know what career you want. In order to find a career mentor, you'll need to know what career you want to have. A welder, a nurse, or something else amazing? If you already know what you want to be, that's great. You will move on to step two. If you're not sure of your future career, no problem. We'll come back to you in a few minutes. Step two, look for a career mentor where you live. Maybe your school hosted a career fair, or maybe you went on a college visit. These events can connect you to possible mentors, but you have to actually talk to them. Um, we'll come back to this too. You could even just look around your town for a mentor. What businesses are there? Start to think about the jobs that these businesses have. For example, banks have accountants and financial planners, restaurants have cooks and chefs, electric companies have linemen, and so on. Then you could get out the phone book and look in the white pages for numbers and addresses. People with careers are in there. In alphabetical order by job? Oh, never mind. Just search the web. You can check out your local Chamber of Commerce to see businesses in your area. They have links to websites, phone numbers, addresses, and even names of people to contact. Seriously? It's a phone book. Old er, people use them sometimes. Now, what if you looked around your town and checked out local businesses, but you can't find the career you're looking for? Like, what if you live here? but the job you want is here. That's okay. The web is also a great place to do virtual tours and virtual job shadows. It's not quite the same as being able to talk in person, but you might get some questions answered. Blast IU 17 has given us some amazing resources we'd love to share with you, including Skype in the classroom, Google Expeditions, Manufacture Your Future, and Penn College degrees that work. All of these sites have opportunities for you to hear from professionals in a career field of your interest. And finally, step three is dare to make contact. No, not that contact. Phone contact with a career mentor. Call them up. No, wait, not yet. You need a plan. Those of you who heard crickets when we said we'd be talking with an adult, pay attention, this next part's for you. Keep this phone call simple. Make a list or a script of what you want to say and have it in front of you. They can't see it over the phone. How do I introduce myself? Just say hello. Tell them who you are and that you're interested in working in their profession. Tell them you want to learn more about their career and ask if they have time to answer a few questions. As always, be polite and respectful. Use your manners. Thanks, Nana. Always good advice. Well, what questions do I even ask? Well, it depends on what you want to know about the career. Some common questions are, what type of education or training do I need for this career? What does a typical day look like for you? What's your favorite part of this job? What is a typical salary for someone in this career? Quick side note, Clark Howard recommends that your training and education after high school should not cost more than your first year's projected salary in that career field. And finally, be sure to thank your newfound career mentor for their time. Look, we're not asking you to make a long-term commitment with your mentor. They're probably busy too. Just a phone call to learn more about that career. And what if you discover you don't like what you learn? Isn't it better to know now what you don't like before you spend years and thousands of dollars on education and training? A career mentor can give you the factual information you need to help you decide if this is a career for you. 
And those of you who still don't know what career you want, that's okay. We didn't forget about you. Aw, that's so sweet. There are a ton of resources to help you, but these are our top four. Number four. Dun, 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 dun. Career One Stop is a site sponsored by the U.S. Department of Labor. You truly can get all the career exploration tools you need in one stop. They have interest inventories, skill assessments, occupation profiles, and career videos. They list the training you need and where you can access it. They also list salary ranges. As you complete education and training, this site can be a resource for your future job searches as well. We like it because it is very convenient to have everything in one place. Number three. ONET is a well-organized, user-friendly site to learn all you can about a career. Just type in a job title. The career is defined and expanded on by explaining skills, knowledge, and abilities needed for these careers. You can take the interest inventory, My Next Move, and check out careers that match your Holland code, also known as your career type. This site will also indicate fastest growing jobs with their bright outlook icon, and hot technologies are those frequently found in job postings. You should really check out the upscale that has taken place at this career website, PA Career Zone. With the exploration process divided into three easy sections, explore, decide, and grow, it just got a whole lot easier to find the perfect career for you. The explore piece has the assessments, video library, over 900 occupations, and a comprehensive career pathway system based on the national career clusters. When the time comes to decide, you will have information on industries, colleges, and financial aid. Finally, the grow portion allows you to set goals and expand your plan. Number one. And our number one pick for career exploration, drum roll please, your school counselor. No, school counselors are there for when you're stressed or need a schedule change. Yes, they do help with those things, but they are also trained to support you in the career decision making process. They can set you up with interest inventories or skill assessments. They can share career data, courses you should take to support future career choices, and help you get connected to opportunities like school to work, dual enrollment, and apprenticeships. They host career fairs and can take you to college fairs. They can even help you find a career mentor. Wow, our time is almost up. Let's review real quick. Talking with experts in the career you want can help you make better career decisions. Career mentors can guide you and help you by setting goals often, leading to more financial security and job satisfaction. Cool people come from Pennsylvania. Be brave and call a career mentor today. Wait, I don't think we're done yet. Yes, we are. That's it. Get a career mentor. That's our message. Let's wrap it up. I think she's right. We forgot an important part. We need to let them know what to do after they have successfully made this call. You have to document this experience in your career portfolio. You know, the folder or digital file where you write down all your activity skills and interests that help you prepare for a future career. Some of you may use career cruising, some use Naviance, some use PA Career Zone, or some just use a Google Doc. But whatever you use, you have to be sure to put this information in there. Why? You know what? I think it's time to call in some help. Miss Capone? Great idea, Amy. I know just the person. Let's check in with Ms. Keezer. She works with students to develop career portfolios during high school and for use after they graduate. Ms. Keezer, can you share a little about the importance of a career portfolio? Hi, sure. I'd be happy to share. And it's really just like Amy said. A career portfolio, even though it might sound a little bit intimidating, is simply just a collection of all of your career-related documents in one spot. It's important that you begin to keep track of your career-related documents because not only will all this information help you to determine what career to pursue, 
but it's also going to help you when you go to apply for a job, for a uh, college interview, for a scholarship, and it's going to be a lot easier if all of your information is assembled in one spot instead of being scattered all over the place, you know, like in your locker, in your car. Um, for some of you, if you store things on the computer, what computer did you store it on? Did you store it on a little USB device? Where is your little USB device? Did you send it through the wash? So it's going to be easier to take all of your career documents, assemble them, keep them together in one spot called your portfolio, and then you'll have this information and you will keep building on this portfolio as you pursue your career and as you get older and older. When you begin to gather all of your documents to put into your career portfolio, don't panic if you don't seem to have a ton of stuff, especially if you're in middle school and you're just starting your career journey. You can begin your career portfolio by simply getting a piece of paper and starting to make a list of all the activities that you're a part of, maybe any clubs, um, think about have you volunteered for anything, and just jot it down on a piece of paper when you did it and what dates you did that. And then as you get older, what you want to do is you want to start to collect anything that's related to a career or a job any special certificates. There are many different ways for you to start your portfolio. You can grab a folder, any type of folder, a binder, and just start to assemble all of your documents, print them out, put them into your folder. Now, I know for some of you, because I've worked with many students, that keeping track of a folder and printouts can sometimes be a little bit hard to say, and you end up losing it. So what I suggest is that if you do have a printout copy, you also want to make sure that you start an electronic copy of everything. That way, when your paper cup copy becomes lost, you don't have to panic and you have your electronic copy. One way to create your electronic copy is to simply create a folder on your computer or laptop and just put all of your documents into there. Remember, right? file organization is key. Right? You don't want your files all over the place. So create a folder just for your career portfolio. You may also, right, and this is what I suggest, use a cloud service, you know, such as Google Drive. Make a folder in Google Drive. That way if something happens to your laptop or other device, you still have everything saved up into the cloud. Now, your career journey is going to involve a lot of research. You're going to be researching about careers, about resumes, about how to find a job, about financial aid, budgeting. You'll probably be researching as you start to move out things such as, such as, hey, how do I find an apartment? How do I do my own laundry? How do I tie a tie for my interview? And you'll want to keep track of all this information that you come across during the years. One of the easiest ways to do this, of course, is that when you find a website you like, I mean, you could write down the URL on a little piece of paper, but then we'll probably lose a piece of the paper. So you want to make sure that you either come up with a system to bookmark the site or because sometimes bookmarking can become a little bit cumbersome, especially if you decide to switch browsers or you have to import, export bookmarks, etc. You may want to consider using a program that um, has part of a bookmarking or a web extension with it, such as I usually recommend to my students to use Google Keep. OneNote is great. Um, Wakelet is a great resource also that you can um, use as an extension or a live binder. Most of these all work kind of similar. What you'll do is you'll go, you'll find the extension, put it on the browser, and then that way when you are out and you're doing all of your research, when you come across a site or a source that you want to save for the future, just go up and click the extension and it's going to then save it to that software program. As you progress from 9th through 12th grade, you're going to see that you're going to start to add in a lot of different experiences, documents, activities into your portfolio. And this portfolio is going to be something that keeps evolving and changing. And that's exactly what a portfolio should do. You'll be able to take it with you after you graduate and you'll keep adding to it throughout the rest of your career. Now, as you gather more and more information, you may want to consider starting to create what we call then an electronic portfolio. And this is basically an electronic presentation about you. And 
think of it almost as like a digital um, resume, but a resume that's been kind of like jazzed up. And what you're going to be able to do with that then is to show it to potential employers or to potential colleges and maybe even use it to get scholarships. And it's going to be able to demonstrate um, who you are and give those individuals or those organizations a better picture about you. Don't be intimidated by the term electronic portfolio. These can be created rather easily. You can use Google Slides, you could use Google Docs, you could use Google Sites, and I have some students who have used some free web programs such as Wix to create their portfolios. In fact, Let's talk to one of my students, Paitlin, who has created an electronic portfolio because so she can show you how she created hers. Hi, Paitlin. We've been talking about electronic career portfolios. Would you show everybody the one that you created? Absolutely. Here's an example of a career portfolio that I created using Wix. You can navigate through my site by using the links on the top here, or you can use the links on my home page. The main screen welcomes and is set up so anyone viewing my portfolio can easily find my resume, my work, and my skills. You can see how I created the site by using the information that I have collected over the years. All right, let's take a look at my resume. So my resume is a collection of some of my leadership experiences, honors, work experience, and achievements that I've had over my high school years including my FBLA activities, community service, and a paper I wrote highlighting the Big Buddy program. Next, we'll take a look at some of my projects. All of these projects are based around FBLA. So these are the projects that I did over the years. Next, we'll take a look at the Library Media Specialist page. Here, you're able to meet our, our librarians Take a look at an interview I conducted with Mrs. Sember, our high school librarian, and take a peek at the source I used to find this information. On the next sub page, you can take a look at my skills versus the career related skills you need to become a library media specialist. Under career outlook and opportunities, this is some research that I gathered when researching my career. And then the last page that we have is the contact page. The contact page provides a way for users to email me any questions or comments they might have through my site. So, well, wonderful. Well, thank you for showing us your portfolio. Thank you for having me. Since you may have a little extra time on your hands right now, it would be an awesome time to start to gather everything for your career portfolio. And to help you on your way, we started a collection of resources for you to use. Simply go to this link, hurry up, take a picture, right? Grab your phone, take a picture, right? Or you can write it down, just don't lose a piece of paper. Did you get your picture? Go to the link and all those sites that we talked about earlier are listed there, as well as some additional information about career portfolios. Okay, now are we finally finished? Yes, Alex, now you are all finished. Thank you all for helping us share with our viewers at home today. Thank you so much for joining us today on Learn at Home with VIA.